Lately it's looking like everything perfect Out the mud with it, I put the work in You can find me where that turf is Pin precision like a surgeon Bad ones used to curb me Showing up to the show when the curse split She know that I'm worth it, I'm finna go up, I'm aerial I got the hit stash, got a bracelet for impact Real tricky, quick to flip a pretty penny to a thick stack Quick stack, think fast and I talk real I give a fuck about how they feel Me and Zay just dropped the propane And it sounded like massive pill For my dog, I'ma ride to the wheels kill Got his hand on the hammer, so keep it legit I been the man with the blueprint I'ma stop till I own every brick I used to lay out in the lawn just to feel the world spin on its axis Now I got the access and the last laugh got it off of the passion I keep it a hundred on the dash now that we got our subtraction Slick talker, I'm a showstopper, you are not solid Tread cops couldn't go a mile in my toe box Stun a shade with the visine, light it up and bring the vibe in Line tint, color spot beam on me, I'm a star every night lit, ultraviolet Ay. I told her make sure that phone is so silent so we know I'm what the vibe is Take a look at my iris, I think she know that I'm high risk I never know what the time is, I never know when my mind went Ay. I got a lot on my plate, I got an eye on the prize And I'ma make sure that we straight, yeah Look, it's a lot on my mind, and I got an eye on the prize And I'ma make sure that we straight, I'ma make sure that we Ay. I got a lot on my plate, I got an eye on the prize And I'ma make sure that we straight, yeah a lot on my mind, and I got an eye on the prize, and I'ma make sure that we stray, I'ma make sure that I used to toss a coin in the waterfalls, in the wishing well, now I get plenty coin, bitch, I'm self-made, you ain't gotta wish me well, you ain't like me then, but I guess it's past tense, cause you tapped in, you was never who you said, I see the facade, when looking, they really be that quick to tell, my guard up, I ain't taking nails, if it's not in my favor, won't sign a deal, I got the royalty in the mail, I got authority in the field, take a look in my iris, I be precise with the timing, I move on a touch, that shit high risk, I never know where my mind went. Hey, I got a lot on my plate. I got an eye on the prize, and I'ma make sure that we straight. Yeah. Like it's a lot on my mind, and I got an eye on the prize, and I'ma make sure that we straight. I'ma make sure that. Hey, I got a lot on my plate. I got an eye on the prize. Tell the truth. And I'ma make sure that we straight. Yeah. Tell the truth. Like it's a lot on my mind, and I got an eye on the prize, and I'ma make sure that we straight. I'ma make sure that.
tell the truth. Information Man Show. The Information Man Show. Tell the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming on over to the program. Welcome. Peace. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming over. It's been a minute since I've been on this channel. I went live just last, what was it, Friday? Uh, when we got the big, uh, um, what was it? Kim Potter gave her testimony. He was cross examinate cross examination, and uh, she did the same thing as Kyle Rittenhouse started crying and what have you. But she, we know what she did. She, she took Deontay Wright's life. And so, what I have to say to you is that when you look at someone like Deontay Wright. And they criminalize black males. They say that all black males have a criminal record, that we all are uh, in jail, that we're in prison. Well, I'm here to debunk this on my show because I know there has been other individuals that have talked about this very same issue that I'm about to talk to you all about tonight. What I want to do is I want to go into the chat room, greet a few people before I begin my presentation Tonight, what I need everybody to do, if you have cellular phones, your iPhones, your tablets, your iPads, your Android phones, you can easily uh, share, click the share and put this right into your Twitter, your Facebook, whatever you like to share it. Share this video because this video is very important. I appreciate everybody who's been rocking with me and supporting me. Now, these type of streams don't always bring over a lot of people because I'm not talking about something that's very polarizing. I'm talking about something that's based in facts, debunking myths and stereotypes and how black males ha are seen in this society. So I want you to definitely hear everything that I'm saying tonight. I'm going to go step by step slow my speech down so that I don't go too rapidly fast. When I get excited about issues, I can go a little rapidly too fast. So I'm going to slow it down. But let me thank Chris CC's for coming over. Erica, who's coming over, uh, been supporting me. Octavius Prime, thank you for coming over. 
Michael Ross, Life Magical Journey. Thank you. Vern's Junk Closet. Check out her channel. You uh, Check out folks' channels. Uh, we are we do have some content creators in there. I want to all give you a clap. We do have content creators in it. We got Old Reliable, who is a mod on this channel. And I'm looking at other people that will be potential mods on this channel as well, because I've been recognizing that there are people that are consistently rocking with my content. Even if you can't stay a long time, you at least come over and hear what a brother has to say. We got Yvette that's in the house. Thank you for being here. A Ben Tide. We got D Durrell Life Solutions saying, what's up, information man? What's up, D Durrell? <laughs> Good to have you over back in the house. D Durrell, he is a, a brother that is a therapist. He works as a, a licensed or a certified therapist. He has a clinic in the Houston area, and he's doing great work in that aspect of his uh, life. And he is a family man as well. I'm going to just tell you straight up, folks. I can uh, debate with the best of them, but I'm really I really grow tired of arguing and going back and forth and getting emotional with people on these platforms. It is something that I have no desire to engage in. Really don't. Because we have too many things that we need to be focusing on too many eggs and scramble eggs and bacon and <laughs> too many eggs to scramble. All right. Uh, we have more important issues that we need to focus on. Now, let's take a let's take a vote right now. I put a, a I put a vote into the chat room. We've got when I said, do you believe that there are more black men in prison than college? We've got about 47 percent of people that have so far voted that have said yes. We have about 53 percent of people who have said no. Tell the truth. So I want to see how that plays itself out. Now, is it a fact that we have too many black men that are being wrongfully incarcerated? Yes, there are too many black men when it comes to the judicial system. And I deal with guys in the penal system. So I see I see a lot. And there are people in there particularly brothers who are their case is very, very questionable. Contrary to many people's belief that black men in particular commit most of the violent crime in our, in our society. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull something up that I should have pulled up a long time ago. And I'm going to look at it right now and I can always share this with my screen. I have some things to share with you today that I want you to see. Okay. And I've talked about this before and I will probably be doing a single video about this. When you talk about crime, the latest crime statistic, according to the FBI, I'm going to use their data. White society commits the total overall crime, according to FBI statistics, at 69.4% overall total crime. Black Americans commit 26.6% of total crime in America. White folks, 69.4%. Black people, 26.6%. You see why this makes this, why this is important? Because if we're going to say that more black men are in prison and in college, we have to look at, well, who's committing the most crime? There are several black men that are incarcerated on chumped up charges, some that belong there, some that don't. But then there are those who don't even see a snipple of a prison cell and they are excelling either going to college or trade school or something of a sort, but they're not incarcerated. When you look at homicides, this is where we do fall short. Aggravated assault, 61.8% is committed by white society. 33.2% is created by black society. When it comes to murder and manslaughter, white society engages in this at 45.8%. 
and we slightly are slightly above at 51.2 percent when it comes to domestic crimes against the family stolen property 61 percent white society 34 percent point nine percent black society but when it comes to sexual offenses things of that nature white society leads at 74.6 percent black society at 20.6 percent now when it goes when it comes to assaults against your family and your children white society leads in this at 65.8 percent where black people are in at 28.3 percent now why do i bring this up why is this important because it's important because it works to the to the fact that there are not a lot of black men that are in, that are not a majority of black men a majority of black men are not in prison we're not criminals we do not even commit most of the crimes in society and when you get when, when you come up here and you say because i know that someone's going to say this well what about black on black crime makes me laugh <laughs> because anytime you live in close proximity to each other you're going to commit crime on each other. Whites commit crime on white people, black on black, Asian on Asian, Latino or Hispanic on Hispanic, Native American on Native American. Is it disproportionate? One can debate that. We do have to stop harming each other. You see that we got rappers who are dropping like flies. They are dropping. Every time you turn around, there's another rapper who has been shot. Just So we do have to fix these problems. But does it reflect that black males, particularly young black males, are all in prison? Not as much as you think. Let me give you a little statistical data here because I have a audio that I'm going to play for you. There's been studies about this. Let me get this right here. So let's look at this right here. OK, so when we when we look at college in the gender gender gaps and all that kind of stuff. Take that off the screen. College gap by race and gender. So white people, white men are is higher. They're higher on the chart, but they drop off. It's really white women that are higher. So there's more white women that go to college. More white women go to college than white men. Same thing when it comes to black society. More, as you can see on the chart, more black women are attending college than black men on the average. Now, this chart goes all the way to 2015. But let me pull another chart up. I want to show you real quick here, if I may. So uh, bachelor degrees earned by African-Americans. So in, a, in the audio that I'm going to play you. The brother says that there are black men that are in college, but overall black people there's not a lot of us. There's only 4% of us in these professional colleges. What does that mean? Specialties, like for example, we're only 2% when it comes to earth science. We're only two, we're very, we're about 6% involved in physical. We're below. We're around 6% and going down, probably a little bit lower than that when it comes to physical sciences. When it comes to math, stats, we're around 8%, but believe it or not, black people have gotten involved in computer science at 10%. Then when you look at the chemistry sciences, with the blue line there, it's around the 8% mark. Biology drops down below to around close to 6% underneath the 8%. So although we are in college, we are not in a lot of these specialized scientists fields at high numbers. And we're not we're in college, but we're not in a lot of these what you would call tra a traditional white colleges where you're getting these specialty master's degrees and what these specialty type programs. We're in these programs, but we're in these programs at low numbers. It still does not negate that there are black males in college. We're just not in these specialty programs like you see here. These brothers are in medical school, right? So you'll always find a small number of us in a medical school class, if at all, right? You may find a lot of black people going into things like humanities, um, history studies, um, things of that nature, English, 
humanity type studies that you will see uh, black people go into back on this chart. It talks about the um, right there. A lot of us are going into IT. Right. Computer science, because that's pretty, pretty. High. And, and, and reason why you will see that spike is because some of these IT programs don't require you to go to like a traditional four year school. You can go to these other you can go to these offshoot programs to get a certificate in that. Right. Well, we know that uh, IT tech got shut down. There are some of these schools that got shut down that ripped people off of money. So this scale goes from 1998 through 2003, 2008, 2013, and 2018, the bachelor degree earned by African Americans. So 10% of bachelor degrees earned by black African black people highly have been in computer science. And computer science is a very broad term because it could be all different types of things that you're doing as it relates to computers. Okay? So I just wanted to put that up there to give you some uh, perspective on what I'm about to show you. Another thing that I want to show you right here, because I'm going to play this. This is a number. This is a number of black men, college versus prison. That goes back to 2013. What I want to show you real quick. And let me put this up here. Look at the number to the right side. You're going to see numbers in black that I just put up on that screen. Those number in black is the number of black men in states and federal prisons and local jails in 2013. Now, you would expect the number to be higher than that. You would say, what? Why? I think the number should be higher than that because they say that black males are we are mass incarcerated. The problem is, is that many times we don't get a fair shot when we go to court. The courts are stocked up against us. We get a public defender. We don't always get the best advise, advisement when it comes to our legal matters. And then we can be chumped up. Our cases can be chumped up poorly. Plus the fact that you don't see a large number of African-American people on juries. When you go and look at what happened to Ahmaud Arbery, his family is very lucky that he got some justice because that jury was made up of 11 white people, only one black. In the in the case in Jesse Messy Jesse Smullick in Detroit, okay, um, his case was embarrassing as well <laughs> because you had the one lone black juror who said that it was a shame that he was the only person on that jury, even though he didn't believe a damn thing that Jesse Smullick said. <laughs> but he said it was a, he said it was a shame. He said that, that throughout Chicago is made up of a large pool of African-American people. And he said he saw them bring the people in and all, and then they slitted it down to him with the majority of that jury being white. It doesn't mean that Jesse Smellick is innocent. I think he's guilty as all get out. So look at the number right there. Seven, that's seven, four, five, six, six, oh, look at that number. Now, that's the number of black men that were incarcerated in state and federal prisons around the 2013. That's not that long ago. Let's look at the number of young black males that were in college around this same period of time. I'm about to put up the numbers in black right next to the other bar. These bars have the numbers, but I'm enlarging them for you. So watch this one. Wow. Wow. Like magic right there. That is the number of black males that were attending college. It's a far, far removed from that number of black men in 2013 that were incarcerated. That's in the penal system. You see that number right there? But this is what it was in 2013. What this does is it tells you that roughly there's a myth buster here. We've been culturally conditioned to believe that all black men are in prison because the media paints that picture that all black men are in a penal system. Are we in the penal system? Yes. Do we get chumped up charges on us? Yes. Are we more likely to be arrested by police because they see us in this society as predators? Yes, yes, yes. Tell the truth. 
But despite the fact that we we are more likely to be incarcerated due to poor uh, legal defense, poor counseling, uh, poor economic issues, because when you have poor economic situations, poor, uh, j- no job opportunity, no nothing, it brings crime. Crime goes up when there is no opportunity for young black males. That's what it was. You see that number right there. I want y'all to look at that number very closely and look at this number again on the right side. That's the number of black men that were incarcerated in prison around 2013 versus the number of black men. See how big of the number is versus. And if you're wondering where did I get this data, I can quote it and I can drop everything I'm talking about. I can back it up with my source. This is out, this is out of Vox. The myth that there are more black men in prison than in college debunked in one chart. This is that chart. I'll be dropping that. They did a study. I'll be dropping the link in the chat room for anybody who questions my information. Look at that number. Now, let's take it closer and closer to where we are today. You may be surprised. This is currently. This is this is this chart right here, but the audio that I'm going to play you in a minute from a professor is going to amplify that these numbers that I just put up is not it's not even uh, close to what I put up here. Let's start with this one first. Technically, the numbers that you just saw is what it was at one point in time in 2013, but they had to make adjustments in those numbers. And the fact of the matter is you have about 840,000 black men in prison in this society. Eight hundred and forty thousand black men in prison. You're going to hear the professor talk about this. That's the most current number. You can extrapolate a little bit. It could be a couple of points more higher in the 20th first century going into 2022 but this is roughly where it has been because you know prison is an evolving door people come into prison people are released and they come back into prison and it's usually the same criminals that are filtered in i'm gonna tell you why because of where i work what i do i see the same guys rotating in over and over again, you get a sprinkle of new people who who come into prison for the first time in their whole life. But then you get a whole bunch more of people who are just being recycled in and out. This is why these things are myths. They are they, they never focus and tell you that a lot of black men who engage in criminal activity, who keep coming back into prison that bring those prison numbers up. These are black men who already have a prison, who already have a record. And they keep cycling back into the system over and over again and recycling over and over again. And just so you know, if you have a prison in your community, the prisoners in your prison are counted on the census. So anywhere you have a city that has a prison, the inmates in there can't vote. They have no right to vote, but they will be counted in the census for that community so that that community can benefit from those bodies in that prison to get whatever they need to get for their community because the census is how the government knows how many schools you need, how many daycares you need, how many community uh, 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 programs you need, how many hospitals you need, how many whatever services you need in a community. And so communities where they put these prisons, it becomes a cotton industry that fuels their economy. And you can have black men in these prisons and any kind of men who don't have a right to vote, who maybe have committed heinous crimes and some that are innocent and the community benefits off of their incarceration. It is a money making racket. Now, let me show you currently from extrapolating from the other number. What is the current number of black men in college in counting? Here we go. Boom. There is technically one point and that plays into the numbers that I just showed you. There is technically one point four million black men in college. Tell the truth. 
1.4 million black men in college versus versus 840,000 black men in prison. 840,000 black men in prison. You do the math versus 1. Point, 1. Point 4 million black men in college. And as well, there was a, a there was a website and I'm sure you brothers are familiar with this website where they talked about that there has been what is it? What is it? 2.5 million black men that have moved into the upper middle class. So there is a segment of black men who represent those black men here who have gone on to college. They represent that 1.4 million black men that have gone on to college in counting that represent those black men that have moved into the 2.5 million in the upper middle class. So these are black men that are educated, have well-paying jobs. They're not black men that are running around with their uh, pants below their butt like they have a bowel movement. <laughs> That's really what I'm talking about. We're talking about what's really going on. What's really happening. I want people to really understand what I'm what I'm talking about here. Lately it's looking like everything perfect. Out the mud with it, I put the work and you can find me where that turf is. Pit precision like a surgeon. Bad ones used to curb me. Showing up to the show in the curse split. She know that I'm worth it. I'm finna go up, I'm aerial. I got a hit stash, got a brace for impact. Real tricky quick to flip on pretty I wanna say peace to T C is in the house, HBO Queen. She knows what I'm talking about. Oh, and just so you know, the majority What's happening is, is that there's not enough black people in general. There's not enough black men that are getting into some of these traditional colleges. You know, your Stanford, your we're not in those schools at super, super high numbers. But the majority of black men and the majority of black people overall, we get most of our degrees from your historical black colleges. So a lot of that pool of black men who make up that 1.4 million that I speak of, a lot of that are black men that go to schools like Morehouse, ladies who go to Spelman, for example, Gramlin State, Hampton, a whole um, Howard University in DC. A lot of us are getting our, our degrees in those areas. Let me go ahead and let you hear what the professor says. Let me say peace to Joy, Patora, Afro, Life with Magical Joy. Keith is in the house. George Frazier is in the house. Golden Melanin, love you. The X House of X Entertainment for coming over. TC, H HBCU Queen, Erica, Michael Ross. Mr. S. Thomas is in the house. Thank you for being here. I'm watching people. It's all comes out in the end. Bonnie Rose. Thank you all for uh, coming over and joining a brother. I appreciate that. We've got, let me see what this person is saying here. Oh, we got the Empress Queen Delight. Thank you for coming over. I think that's Miss Stanford. And she says, and if you don't do community service here in Georgia, even after paying off fines and fees, they will still send you to jail for 90 days and to pay off community service. Ours is 10 cents per hour. So a hundred hours, a thousand. Very interesting. Very Tell interesting. Tell the truth. Let me let you hear something. I need you all to hear what the professor is saying. Let me fire up this audio. I want everybody to please be patient and listen to everything that he is saying, because everything that he is saying will reinforce what I just told you, particularly the numbers that I just brought up. This is a professor in college. He is seeing, he's explaining the, 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 the balance between there being more black men in college versus prison 
but he's also explaining that we need more black males and more black people in general going into the professional type fields, the engineering, the science, STEM. That's an area where we lack and black women still lead overall black men in gaining college degrees and attending college. However, let's not sleep on the fact that you have um, black males who also go to what we would call schools where they get a trade. Let's not sleep on the importance of trade because this is the facts. Not everybody is cut out to go to college or not everybody wants to go to college. So therefore, there are black men who may not have a degree, but they may have a trained skill and something that they are happy with. Plumbing, electrician, engineer, those sort of things. Let's hear what the brother is saying right now. Hang on for a minute, folks. Having a little bit of, um, let me rewind. Let me rewind the page and hopefully I can get this thing working. Now it wants to act weird. Let me play a little bit of music while I get this thing um, working like it needs to be working. Now it wants to give me some technical problems. So let me see here. Hang on, folks. I'm going to I'm going to I got to have you hear this. Give me one minute. You might have heard this in a movie. You might have heard this from a politician. You might have heard this from a TV pundit. But you've probably heard that there are more African-American men in jail than in college. Even then-candidate Barack Obama talked about this at an NAACP candidate forum back in 2007. We have more work to do when more young black men languish in prison than attend colleges and universities across America. Now, that's a powerful image, but is that really... Obama was 100% wrong. That's the problem with Obama. He went to Morehouse and start telling black young brothers who graduated Morehouse, nobody wants to hear your excuses right after they then graduated and worked hard. He, he fed right into the cultural conditioning and what he said in that speech, and he was wrong. And here we go. Here we go. True. Something our next guest has taken a look at. Ivory Tolson is an associate professor at Howard University School of Education. He wrote about this for the root.com and he says That's wrong. There are one point four million 
black men in college right now, and there are about 840,000 black men in prison. That is a huge difference. Yeah. Now, is that because those numbers were always wrong, or are there more black men in college now than in prison now? I believe they were always wrong, and there is some debate about that. The citation of that stat came from the Justice Policy Institute's report, Cell Blocks versus Classroom, uh, which they wrote in 2002. When they uh, analyzed the data, they looked at the National Center for Educational Statistics headcount of black men in college and compared that to the Department of Justice uh, count of uh, inmates at the time. And they came up with almost 100,000 more black men in prison than in college. Uh, now, what's transpired since then is there's been more than the 100% increase in the number of black men in college as reported by the National Center for Education Statistics. And so what I did was I pulled the data uh, from 2001 uh, that the Justice Policy Institute used, and I noticed that at least 1,000 colleges weren't reporting uh, their headcount of black males then. Uh, and I also noticed that a lot of colleges that didn't report any numbers when Justice Policy Institute wrote their report uh, were historically black universities, uh, that were, were big state universities that I'm pretty sure had uh, some black males present at the time. Why do you think that this myth has persisted? Yeah, well, in the 90s, there was a rapid expanse of the criminal justice population. Uh, and right now, the rate of incarceration among black males is uh, seven times that of white males. And so I think that we had this feeling that something was wrong, and so we got this catchy stat to go along with it. Well, what do you think have been the consequences of this widespread belief? Yeah, do you I think, think there is one? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think there's consequences to young black males who are trying to figure out how to get into college, and then they have this ominous stat uh, that they are more likely to go to prison than to college. Also, a lot of People who work with our young black males in high school settings and middle school settings don't really understand the black community that well. Eighty percent of all teachers are, are white. And so if this frames their understanding of who our young black males are, and then their expectations are a little bit lower. I also think it influences the types of programs that we use to help them get into college. Uh, because the way that we have juxtaposed college and prison uh, has led to some erroneous assumptions like uh, if we put in uh, violence prevention programs and gang abatement programs, that's somehow going to inspire young black males to go to college because we've looked at them on this mythical fork, you know, of one foot in college and the other foot in prison. So, so your argument is that this kind of leads to this idea that young black men need to be contained as opposed to encouraged to seek college. And right. you think it should be the other way because, in fact, you say yes. that's really where the population yes. is. Mm -hmm. You also say in your piece for the TheRoot.com that it's not that there aren't enough black men in colleges, that there is a problem, that there aren't mm -hmm. enough black men in competitive colleges. Exactly, yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, if you look at the representation of black males in college, they represent about 5% of the college population. Uh, and if you look at the adult population of black males in the United States, we represent about 5.5% of the adult population. Uh, so contrary to popular belief, uh, we aren't underrepresented in higher education, but we are underrepresented at competitive universities and overrepresented at community colleges. The black Just to give your who, stat, you said mm -hmm. that in your piece, you said that the top 10 colleges for enrolling black males consist of three for-profit colleges, four mm -hmm. community colleges, right. and three public four-year institutions. Right. Uh, what's the problem with that? The problem is that Young black males are not being advised to seek out the most competitive alternatives, and they're not being prepared in a way that we should be preparing them, I think, because we believe that just getting them into any college is a success. Or keeping them out of prison is its own success, so right. therefore the expectations are low. Uh, oh. Yes. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. You know, you teach at one of the premier historically black right. uh, universities in the country, Howard University. Mm -hmm. yeah, have you talked about this with your students? And, and what do they say when you raise this? A lot of them are surprised. Uh, they all understand, though. And uh, in fact, during our convocation speech, our keynote speaker uh, mentioned that there are more black men in prison uh, than in college. And Did during... you jump up and wave? <laughs> uh, no, wave? I, no, I, I, I restrained myself. No. I restrained myself. <laughs> but I, I was very proud, though, because during the convocation luncheon, everyone from the president of the university, you know, down to students came up to me and asked me, you know, did you hear the speaker? You know, we got to correct that. Uh, 
they know the statistics, uh, and you know we're just trying to trying to catch on. But well, before we let you go, I do want to ask though: Do your numbers include the number of young black men under criminal justice supervision? If they're mm-hmm. not in prison, right. they may be on probation. Right. They may be on parole. They are not free right. actors. Uh, I haven't done that myself. Uh, I've seen someone else do that, and and it, it came up a lot closer, but there were still more black men in, in college. So what should people say now? If people who want to talk about this, what should they say? I would like to see the issue of mass incarceration divorced from higher education. I think that the nature of those problems are completely different. We are grossly overrepresented in the criminal justice system. And everyone who is doing work related to sentencing disparities, the crack versus poly cocaine ratio, all the biases that go on in every stage of the criminal justice system, they should continue that fight. Um, But they really don't need to discuss kids in college as a part of that fight. Uh, And there's a lot of things that young black males are missing from education right now in their preparation to go to college. So I would like to see the advocates who are working on on, on fair practices at school, uh, reducing these resource disparities where we have underqualified teachers teaching our young black males, where we lack pre- college preparatory classes and a curriculum that, that would even get them admitted to the most competitive universities. That needs to be worked on. Uh, so what I would tell people to say is uh, just stop saying that there's more black men in prison than in college. Work in your lane and make a difference. Ivory Tolson is an associate professor at Howard University School of Education. He wrote a piece for TheRoot.com. That's an online publication that focuses on issues of particular interest to African Americans. The title is More Black Men in Jail Than in College Wrong. And he was kind enough to join us in our Washington, D.C. studios. Professor Tolson, thank you for speaking with us. All right. Thank you so much for inviting me. We'd like to mention that we did reach out to the Justice Policy Institute. Their representative said the organization stood by the findings in their 2002 report, which was titled Cell Blocks or Classrooms, and that more information about their methodology is available on their website. Tell the truth. Thank you for the super chat. Check. 
no drip, this Tell him run it on No sleep, no rest Might crash, might wreck But first die, Stretch. tell him run it on Nine out of ten, rub through my hands, I'm by my lonely Turn to a savage, now my baby wants to hold me I love my fans, don't need no friends, I got my homies Thought I could trust you, I find out you tried to zone me I'm number one up on that court, I'm Nick McGrady The first one in, the last one out, can't call me lazy Put in my hours, send the invoice and they pay me I need six rings like MJ and Tom Brady I wake up, flex, thumb down that check No drip, this, tell him run it all No sleep, no rest, might crash, might wreck But first die, stretch, tell him run it all I wake up, flex, thumb down that check No drip, this, tell him run it all no sleep, no rest Might crash, might wreck But first die, stretch Tell him run it Y'all gon' make me take that trip way out to Europe I call up Niger, he'll come through in a hurry Those London boys don't come to play, you should get worried One false move, find yourself there getting buried This with the... So extra, but I know I'm the same. Love me in spite of my trauma. Give me what I need instead of the drama. Cause when it pop off, it's like, oh my, all good all day, but the night we be going so hard. So tell me what we on a day, babe. I could keep that same energy. When you go low, I go low too. But you'd rather stay high, I know. Can we stay high, babe? I'd rather be on that way Trying to control our emotions If we don't
Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Thank you for the super chat. God, I'm muted. Oh my God, all this time I've been talking and I've been muted. Oh my God, I apologize for that. All this time I've been talking and I was muted. My goodness. So, what, what was I trying to say here? Let me go over this again. Man, um, the articles, I dropped the articles in the chat room. Let me do this one more time. I'm going to drop these articles in the chat room. And then I'm going to open up the panel. Sorry about that, man. I kind of hate when I forget to unmute myself. And then I just hate that. I apologize for that. I want to thank. Thank you for the super chat. Sheldon for the super chat. Appreciate that. Thank you for that thank super chat. Thank you for the super chat. Let me put that in there. That's the article, the myth. And then here's the article from NPR. I don't know if you all could hear me when I was talking about these articles thank you earl owens for telling me that i'm muted man i'm mad because i spend all that time talking and nobody could hear me so let me just go over what i was trying to say man 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 so the brother that you were listening to um the said this the howard university professor senior researcher analysis for the congressional black caucus foundation uh, Deputy Director of the White House Initiative HBCU called this, called this in 2013 column for The Root. The most frequent quoted stat about black men in the United States is that it is very much deadly wrong that we are all in prison. Where it comes from in 2002, the Justice Policy Initiative Institute, the Justice Policy Institute and national nonprofit dedicated to reducing incarceration releasing released a report titled cell block or classroom that's what the professor was uh, talking about when you heard him on the npr interview okay let me see here it was often deployed uh, displayed by those deployed by those who wanted to explain just how di dire racial disparities in the United States were and how disparity the situation how disparaging the situation facing black men needed attention and intervention even obama has mentioned it 
at a 2007 NAACP forum that he attended as a president candidate. He told the crowd, we have more work to do when more young black men languish in prison than attend college universities across America. But Obama was completely wrong. There are actually more black men in colleges that are in prison. However, we still have work to do. He's right about that because we still overall don't have enough black men overall and black people overall in colleges in totality. We do have our historical black colleges who supply the most degrees to black people. That is where we're getting most of our black professionals from in a small number who go to what you call traditional regular colleges. Okay. Now, in 2012, former NBA player Charles Barkley explained why he felt he had to carry a gun, said, you know, we as black people always we don't have respect for one another. You know, we got more black men in prison. So Charles Barkley is another one of these black athletes who uh, needs to be quiet. Sometimes he made this stereotypical statement and he was wrong about the statement that he made. OK, OK. Uh, are there black people out there that can do you some harm? Yes, there are all types of people that can do you some harm, depending on the environment that you're in, where you're at, what the circumstances are. And Barkley might have gone, to, might have had some experiences that left him feeling the way he feels. I get, I, I give him that, but we have to be very careful when we make these broad brushing stereotypes and what have you. The Bureau on Justice Statistics National Prison Statistics Program report that in that same year, 526,000 were state in, in states or federal prison. So there were there were black men around 526,000 of black men were in state or federal prisons. OK, between 2013, that was 219 and six. That was 2019, 660 black men that were in local jails making for a total of 745,000. But we know now that that really rounds off to there being 800 in total and 840,000 black men that were been, have been incarcerated. Whereas 1.4 million black men are actually in college. Let me come out of that for now. Little tongue tied there. And let me see what's going on in the chat room. We've got Keith in the house saying Charles Barkley is is a cornbread bucked in. Yeah, he made. Let, let me just read this again. I don't think y'all. This is what Charles Barkley said again. Let me read the whole thing. In 2012, former NBA player Charles Barkley, who often puts his foot in his mouth, <laughs> explained why he felt he had to carry a gun. He said, you know, we as black people always don't have respect for one another. Yes, there are black people who don't have respect for one another. I would agree with that. But, you know, this is Charles Barkley. You know, we got more black men in prison than we do in college and crime in our neighborhoods is running rampant. Now, when you talk about neighborhoods, what neighborhoods are you talking about? Are you take, talking about black neighborhoods that are low on the social economic ladder where there's no opportunity, no job opportunity, no training, no nothing? And there's drugs. Yes, you're going to have high crime. But if you're talking about middle class black families, upper middle class black families, rich black families or black families that are the work that are working class within these communities, they're not committing crime. And let me just give you all another experience that I had growing up. How many of you in the chat room put a one if you remember this back in the 80s, uh, middle 80s, late 80s, somewhere within the 80s, you had the midnight basketball program. They did midnight basketball across the whole country and they ended up ending the program. Do you want to know why? Is my mic working? Do you want to hear a little secret? The midnight basketball program was too effective. The midnight basketball program was a program not just about playing basketball, but in order to be in a midnight basketball program, you had to conduct yourself properly. You had to go to classes for job training. You had to go to classes for counseling. They had the different rival street gangs that would come together and talk out their differences in order to participate, you had to be provided education, 
training, job opportunities, and to do something to make a truth to stop the violence. And when the Midnight Basketball Program was functioning across this country back in the 80s, it was too damn effective to the point that the police were not meeting their quotas. So all of a sudden, all these different city halls start talking about we don't have money for the Midnight Basketball Program that was keeping a lot of brothers off the street from selling narcotics. You can find money for everything else, but you couldn't find money to keep a program that was actually effective. No, because the police were not meeting their quotas. They couldn't arrest anybody because it was keeping brothers off the street and it was effective. So they had to get rid of it. You see what I'm talking about. Now, before I bring people up on the panel, let me show you peace to add it again. Media, Keith, Joy, big dog Phillies in the house. Chat, I'm a clap for you, brother. Erica's in the house. Everybody that's in the house that's rocking with me. Peace to all of you. Now, let me play something for you. This is powerful. I can relate to what these young men are going through, what you're about to see right here. And I'll tell you why. They do this at Morehouse. This is a ritual that they do at Morehouse to introduce young black men to the campus to prepare them for their four to five, six years that they're going to be there to prepare them for manhood, brotherhood. Now, the chant that you're going to hear them chanting is a chant that I have chanted myself within my organization. I'm a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and I'm proud of it because we get stuff done. We engage in community service. We Send young black men to college as well as young black ladies. We follow people in, as they trickulate through the system. So for anybody out there, because I know people are going to get into that. Oh, the bole and all that. Well, what are you doing? Most of the history that you celebrate was created by my organization. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., third good marshal. Adam Clayton Powell. Paul Robeson. Jesse Owens. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I can name a whole lot of them. These are black men who created your history that you look up to. March on Washington. We organized it. Most of the boycotts were organized by alpha men. A real brotherhood, not this cyber brotherhood, real brotherhood that gets things done. We have programs like Project Alpha where we deal with black males as it relates to their responsibility if they get a young lady pregnant. We have tutorial programs, mentor programs. We have partnered up with March of Dimes, Big Brothers and Big Sisters programs. We do many of the things that you see a hundred black men do. Let me put that back up there. You see these young men holding the hundred black men banner. We follow young black men. We have alpha academies where we take in black young males into a school scholastic situation and we tutor them. We find out what they want to be in life. What are their aspirations and goals? If they want to be a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, whatever it may be, we pair them up with a brother who's actually doing what it is that they want to do so that they see a black man in motion. So if you see someone that looks like you, you, that you can relate to, then you can believe that you can achieve. Brothers are going out and they're doing this. Now in this video, that I'm going to show you these young men in Morehouse are being initiated into the Morehouse tradition. And they chant something, someone trying to sneak in my house. It's the same thing we do in my brotherhood when someone is coming into our organization. 
and we're letting them know that it's going to be that you're going to be a part of this brotherhood and the brotherhood is serious. It's going to be one. We're going to all be the rock. Let me play this for you. A lot of this that you're about to see. What's going on, Chris CC? It's good to see you over here. Let me see who else is in the chat room that I'm probably missing right now. Allison, thank you for being here. Joy, I see you again. Let me see what Brother Keith is saying. Tell the truth. Yes, tell the truth. Tell the truth. And let me put this up here. What I'm about to play for you brings me back to my college days and some of the chants that we used to chant as brothers when in trying to empower each other. One of the things that we would do in school, this is why it is important to, to have a brotherhood. It doesn't mean you have to join a fraternity, nobody, but, this is in, but it's important to still have some form of brotherhood because I remember when I was in school, the brothers would get together and we would study together. We would share information to prepare each other. If, if, this, if my brother was in that, if I'm taking a biology class, and my brother took that same biology class. He gave me his notes. He gave me his book and said, this is what you can expect in a class. This is how the teacher teaches to the book. This is what you need to focus on, brother. That's a brotherhood helping one another push, pull and pull. I reach down as I make it to the top. I reach down to pull you up. There's a famous picture with a black man's arm reaching down to pull another black man up. Why can't we do that on YouTube? Why can't we do that on these platforms instead of going at each other? I want y'all to see this because this brings me back to my days. The spiritualness of it, the power of this. They say that black men were all thugs, pants below our behind. We're all rappers. We're all all these other goofy, stereotypical things. No, we're more than that. No, this is what, what you're going to see here is what we really are. Here we go. I'm back. I'm going to drop a link for people to come upstairs with me. I think uh, TC, I sent you a link by email. I know you emailed me. But before I uh, begin that, let me share my screen like right now. Boom. Right here. Urban Nerds Worldwide. This is George Makem's organization that I've been telling people about. 
Everybody needs to check this organization out. George Makem is in Philadelphia. He's doing God's work. Okay, here is the web page, home, about, media. You can buy swag, meaning the uh, T-shirts. All of this goes to his organization. You can get donations. And unlike other people who claim they're going to build a school, this brother really has a 501c3 foundation. If you would like to support the Urban Nerds 501c3 foundation, click the PayPal logo follow uh, below to donate and you definitely will get a legitimate tax uh, reduction. The donations allow us to complete our service to the Irving community with the youth children needs ex children need exposure to know it's okay to be a urban nerd. So this is uh, the organization, the about page right here. There you go about us. Urban nerds worldwide is dedicated to the bringing to the border experience to inner city kids when it comes to science, technology, engineering, mathematics, a.k.a. STEM and other nerd categories such as video games, comic books, cartooning and more. OK, media. There's some things here. And there, there's Brother Makem. He is on YouTube. He has a YouTube channel. Urban Nerds Worldwide at the Millennium Skating World. So he's taking kids out. Just a week ago, he took kids to a museum to teach the kids about what happened during civil rights and how black people were made to sit in the back of the bus. This brother is doing the real work. Okay. Uh, it's a shame that we can't have uh, brothers like this. Right. It's a shame that, you know, when he goes live, he don't get a lot of views over there when it comes to this. It's a shame that I can do a stream about black men, not all being in college. And I can't even get 100 people over here for something so important is this. Those of you that are here, I want you here. I thank you for being here. I clap to you. But I think it's a shame. Here is. My man right there. Let me go ahead and even play this. I never had the opportunity to be introduced to. Some of our children live in inner cities where they'll never see the inside of a college. They'll never see the inside of, of a museum. So us coming from urban areas, I decided to create the Urban Nerds and, and to let the world know that some of our kids are geniuses. But they have to, they have to, they have to let them, they have to be known it has to be let known that they're geniuses. We have to pull out their genius. We have to we have to tell these children that they're smart. We have to introduce them to the sciences and the mathematics where they can excel, where they will have the same opportunities that, uh, that other children would. So I need you guys to support Urban Nerds worldwide, man, because we're coming to a city near you, man. And you'll notice children are very happy when black men are involved. So the, so me and my partner Marvin Burrow. Marvin Barrow, that's decided right. Decided to be involved. So here, here, here Tell are the truth. As I step to the side, one, two, three. Evidence. All right, clap to that. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. It ain't about the doxing. It ain't about all the fighting and the infighting. It's about that's what we really need to be about. That's what we really need to be about. That's the truth. That's the truth. Tell the truth. That's the truth. Tell the truth. Let me put a link in the chat room for those who want to come up and uh, join me and say a few words about my present about the presentation. Your thoughts before we end before I end this live stream. I would definitely love folks to come up. TC, I did send you a link. If you are still in the chat room, you're more than welcome to click the link. But I did send you a link. So come on up and while I wait for folks to play a little music while we wait. Lately it's looking like everything perfect. Out the mud with it, I put the work in. You can find me where that turf is. Pin precision like a surgeon. Bad ones used to curb me. Showing up to the show when the curse split. She know that I'm worth it. I'm finna go up, I'm aerial. I got the hit stash, got a bracelet for impact. Real tricky, quick to flip a pretty penny to a thick stack. Quick stack. Think fast and I talk real. I give a fuck about how they feel. TC, I sent you the link to your email. Here, let me send it again. Check your email. I just send it to you again. I keep it a hundred on the dash. 
now that we got us some traction. Slick talker, I'm a showstopper. You are not solid. Trade cost couldn't go a mile in my toe box. Misunderstood just gave me a super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you, misunderstood. Thank you. I should have make sure that phone is on silent so we know what the vibe is. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for that super chat. Thank you. A clap to you as well. I just sent UTC the uh, link to your email and I'm putting the links inside the uh, chat room. Thank you for that super chat again. I really appreciate Thank you that for the super chat. Really appreciate that. Okay, right now, do you believe that there are more black men in prison than in college? And right now, 49% say yes, 51% say no. If you have not voted in the poll, please do so. We've got about 95 people who have actually rendered their votes. And there she is right now. I see her getting ready to come on in. And there you are, my sister. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. Thank you. I am happy to be here. Well, I'm and happy I to have you here. Brother. And I know you have experience in this area. So we definitely want the people to hear what you have to say. Wow. Now this, this is it right here. I, I mean, listen, you and Mahogany are killing me this weekend because you guys are coming strong with your, um, with your commentary. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, HBCU queen. I'm a graduate of two HBCUs and, um, North Carolina A&T and Lincoln University of Pennsylvania. And I got my graduate degree in Masters of Human Services. Mm -hmm. um, my, my master's thesis was college preparation for parents okay. who had children preparing for college. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. So all of these things that you're talking about, are yes. Amazing. And so and so I, let me let me go back to some of the foundation because you skirted over some so some sort of most deep, the in-depth things that we as a people have to really take care of. Yes. And I want to say everybody's to, listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to say kudos to that brother who is working with the children. That is not an easy thing. And I just want to say kudos to him before I get deep. Um, now. <clears throat> The numbers of African Americans or Black people in this country are are, are and will always be off. Mm -hmm. So therefore, any numbers that come up are always going to be off. Yes, and this is the reason why. Because number one, ah, mm -hmm. uh, number one, you still have some Black folks that that don't want to answer and don't want to participate in the polls and don't want to participate. In answering the questions and things of that nature. So, of course, we don't have their participation. Then you have some black people who don't want to be called black. They want to be called other. And so we have that political that political thing going on. And then you have people who uh, are possibly, you know, there are, you know, those that are, you know, maybe half uh, Mexican, half black, half Japanese, half black, half yes. whatever, and black. And they want to be they they're considered in another cat. They want to be consent have another category. Mm. Um. Hmm. So we lose. So we lose those people. Even though, when the the legals or the law enforcement see these people, they yes. see them as black. <laughs> okay. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So our numbers are always let me just say this to just to no avail. Our, our numbers, ladies and gentlemen, are always going to be off. Mm -hmm. Number one, we already know that mo many people do not participate in the census. And that's by design. Some of us don't want to participate in the census. And the census knows that. And they really don't want us to participate in the system, in the census to the degree we know we have always been the majority in this country. Nobody should, we shouldn't even be, we shouldn't even fret that. You're right. We've always been the majority. 
I don't even understand how people can even think that 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 anyway. So um anyway, the mm-hmm. thing is is that we're not the majority participants in some things and incarcerated. So let's get this and this word incarcerated down pat before I go mm-hmm. to the HBCUs. Okay. Incarcerated means confined to prison. Confined to prison. That's right. That's all that means. It doesn't mean it's charged with a felony or charged. Right. It just means confined. So other people can be confined, can be, can also uh, be, have a felony and things of that nature. So I, I think what we need to do is watch the verbiage. How many people have felonies? How many people have um, misdemeanors? And so forth and so on, because we are more than likely are going to be incarcerated for this other reason that you talked about and incarcerated, confined to prison. Why? Because didn't you just said it profoundly, ladies and gentlemen, the head count in the prison system helps out those people that are in that particular county or in that particular city. More than likely, it's a county. Right. Okay. And it helps in in the people around in that particular area are usually, Mm -hmm. usually, usually not right. Are not majority African-American. Right. Those people in that area need jobs. They need jobs because they don't don't have jobs in those little Right, right, right. It's called, uh, in Cal- I know in California, it's called prison industries. And when they build these prisons in these boony kind of areas, it booms the economy of these small towns and Absolutely. employs the people. Absolutely. And, and listen, I work for the United States Census as a statistician. So I, I get it. And let me tell you something. I, I want to, I'll say this. One of the reasons why I'm not there is because I asked this basic question. I asked about three questions, but the one question that I did ask was, are the people that are in those prisons, are mm-hmm. they counted where they live from where they are from? Or are they counted where they are? in those prisons. And when they told me that they were counted where they are in those prisons, I already knew what time it was. You right. said it. You said it information man. You just said it. You confirmed it. You 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 laid the bricks on it. It is and that's exactly what it is, okay? Right. And so we have a plethora of folks that are incarcerated. Now, why are they incarcerated? They're incarcerated for unfo- for different reasons. Economics, definitely one. Because here's the thing. You know what? I am, I'm going to, and I don't have statistics because I have not really studied this, but this is something that just came to my mind. I'm not going to say that other folks in other cultures are not charged with misdemeanors or charged with felonies. I am going to say that they're not, they're not incarcerated. And I am going to say that the reason why they're not incarcerated is because sometimes they're sentenced or <clears throat> or they're they're charged and then they're sentenced to do nonprofit work or work you know work work uh, not work study they they they're there to do um co- community service um they'll definitely put a a thing on their on their leg um uh, one of those ankle bracelets and right Right. Uh, let and, me just say this to highly favorite. She's right. Too many black men are serving 50 years in prison uh, that are uninnocent. Yeah. Like, for example, there is disproportionately too many black men that are on either death row or serving time in prison. Although not all black men are in prison. There's qu- lots of us in college, but it does not. What I did today is I'm not trying mm-hmm. to negate the fact that there are still black men who are getting railroaded in the system that are in prison for years on years. Mm-hmm. And, and, and let me add to what you were saying too, sister. Another thing that I, I realized myself is that other groups can get um, they'll get arrested and they'll get exactly what you said. They'll get community service. They'll get a little slap on the, uh, on the finger. They'll be in seen the as mentally ill. Um, oh, this person mentally ill. Let's give them a break. Let's put them in a program. And also 
they get better representation. What happens to black males and black women is when we get ourselves in some situation, either of our own, not of our fault or something that we did, we don't get the best representation. Another thing that these trials should show us that just took place is that when we go to court before a trial, very obviously, there are not we don't have a jury of our own peers. They look like other people. And those other people have a stereotype as to how they see us from watching their 10 o'clock news. We, and, and why do we have that? Because you can talk to, I can talk to about 10 people that I know. I'll talk, no, I'll say a hundred people that I, I know. I myself, I want to do jury duty. I, I constantly ask those people, please let me do, give me the worst case ever. And I never get chosen. However, there are various people around in communities. I don't want to do jury duty. I don't want to do that. I'm not, and they don't want to do it. And they don't want to, they don't want to do jury duty, even though we need people to do jury duty. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah. participate in the jury duty. Well, you you heard what I you heard what I said earlier. And what's going on, brother Keith? The brother oh, who's man. what's going Not on, man? Brother. It's good to have you up it's, here, man. It really is. <laughs> um, I've been meaning to check out your show. I've been meaning to get up here and just you know speak my mind. First and foremost, bro, mm -hmm. allow me to give you your flowers early. I appreciate <laughs> all the stuff that you, you do, big brother. As of lately, I wasn't you know I wasn't able to do much because of work and the holiday season. Nah, man, it's okay. Sure my kids. Folks, you look sure your my family. Kids enjoy them. Your family you know, is the most important thing, brother. I have no yeah. problem. Your family comes first always. But let me let me say oh. this, because you said something. Um, it was a it was a it was a thought that I had. Um, what's happening is is that the system is stacked against us when oh. we don't have enough of our people willing to participate in it. You just had the the the, 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 the black guy, black man. I can't think of his name, so I'm sorry, from Chicago, who is now talking because he was the only juror in the Jesse Smollett case. And he said that there were tons of black people that were brought up for that jury and then none of them got picked but him. And he believes that there's some funny business going on. This is a man that was on the jury. He says Something needs to be investigated. That's the way I interpret it, the way he was saying it, that right. something don't make sense. Right. Just like in uh, the case of Aubrey, Aubrey's family is very lucky. You have a you have a, a, a an area that was 27 percent black and they could only get one black person to pick on the jury. Didn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but brother Keith, what's on your mind? Oh man, I just um hey look, I usually just sit back in the chat room and just chat and listen to what's going on. But you know what, big brother, I love the conversations and I love the panels. I love everybody in the chat. Everybody that just comes with great information, you know, I enjoy it. And unfortunately, YouTube isn't built like that because sometimes I get caught way out there listening to all kind of YouTube beefs and this and that. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff is set up like Cartoon Network. You know what I mean? Everybody's right. just animated cartoonish that's why i try to stay away from that and i try to keep up with information right. that really really matters well the reason why that yeah. happens brother because this type of content is not going to get pushed through the algorithms of youtube yeah. Yeah. see if we were up here cussing at each other and carrying on mm -hmm. oh man the algorithms will be spinning and next thing yeah. you know a whole bunch of people will come over because yeah, it'll get it'll, it'll get pushed to them right it'll get it'll get signaled to them Absolutely. So, That's why so, earlier in the so, polls, I said me, that I me, do believe let me just finish. more. Oh, let me oh. Just finish. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. uh, Sister TC. See, I'm sorry. Yeah, cause, cause I, it's the first time I, I had a chance HBCU. to talk to this brother live, but go ahead, Sister. <laughs> oh, okay. I got you. I understand. Uh, but I did want to say that in reference to the participation, but oh, just okay. like anything, I think that black folks have also now grown into and matured into, and we've morphed into this thing about, listen, we, we really do want it. We do see the need for participating in some of these, in some of these juries, juries. And mm -hmm. we're we're figuring out and we're figuring out the system at the same time. They still know how to 
question. They still know how to uh, create the narrative. They control the narrative. We have to be smart and wise. This is the reason why we need intelligence, intelligent, emotionally intelligence and emotional intelligence, emotional fortitude. And we have to be able to rival these people so that we can get what we want. And, and honest. And so I'm just, I'm just going to say that. So I hear what you're saying mm-hmm. and, and, and we, we need more people that are going to be out there who I, I've been out there with the police and ask asking witnesses questions. They don't want to answer any questions because they're scared. They're scared of the backlash and the consequences. Right. So they, they don't participate. So therefore prosecution has nothing to, to bring to the table and then prosecution gets slick about it, you know, and yes. And, and things of that nature. But here's the thing. I did like yes. what the gentleman from Howard said. I don't like, and I never, me, I never did either. I don't like the contrast of black men in, in college, black men in prison. And that is a negative. And, and I always tell people, I don't even want to talk about those two things together because I think that that's a setup. And if we're going to talk about one thing, cause they're, they're very, very different circumstances. And and they come with a lot of different um, a lot of different energy. I went to two HBCUs. My father's a graduate of an HBCU Morehouse Alpha Man. My grandfather is a graduate of St. Aug and Alpha Man. And this is three generations back. We have and we we have various colleges and universities. Here it is. You are an you are an alpha yourself. You all have been around a hundred years. Some of these colleges and universities have been around now about a hundred and ninety years ago. Yes, eighteen thirty-seven was Cheney University that graduated in in eighteen forty-one or forty-two. Their first class, eighteen forty-two. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'm not mistaken, eighteen sixty-five was the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay. So we were, uh, and then you got Cheney, you got Cheney, you have Lincoln, you have Bowie, Wilberforce. They were educating black, Kwame and Kruma, all of, they were educating black people before an Emancipation Proclamation. So right. we have a plethora of black people in and around our areas who were educated, hence the whole William Still, the whole, the Harriet Tubman, w- William Still was the one that brought and documented the brother, he was the one who docu- let's talk about something. The brother documented all the slaves or as many as he could as mm-hmm. best possible. And I mean, he did he did the doggone thing. Okay, well, let me thank ask God you this. for William Still and that family. Right. And so we have people who were doing the thing. We had the Masons. We had all in this. And see, this is what I want to tell black people who say, oh, that's those secret society. That's the devil. That's the demon. Let me tell y'all something. Be, be Shut your mouth. Because it had not been for some of these secret societies. And the reason why y'all may call it secret societies is because you really don't know. And, and, and they were doing things and moving people from one area to the another, making sure people had jobs, making sure people right. were, you, you know, were, were able to get to colleges, were able to get to one church to the other. They had they right. had they most, had a system. Most of these these men and women that were members of some of these organizations, they're responsible for where we are today in terms of the Thank certain you. rights that we have. They were the ones that laid the path. When you talk about the black middle class, when you talk about people like that of that nature, when you talk about the Hall and Renaissance, there are people that came from these organizations that are responsible for laying the foundation that you grew up going to school reading about in books. People that you got hanging up on your wall. You so, uh, and see, m- most people who talk say those sort of things is because they don't really have any understanding. Right. They don't have any and understanding. That's what I'm here to say. Um, I'm here to say information man that as black people today what we really need to do is is going to be very very basic and elementary number one if you don't know what you're talking about shut your mouth that's that's the, that's what but you know on youtube stuff. a lot of people say things about these organizations and i sit back and i laugh because sure. they don't even know what they're talking about so that means well, if, right. when you talk about these organizations I'm gonna you, jump back go ahead no 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 keith brother keith keith no no keith stay up brother 
Say what you want to say okay. on you. Say what you wanted to say, brother. I didn't mean to delay you. Go ahead. No, it's fine because I mean I I'd rather listen to what you guys are saying. I just had to finally for the first time get up here and holler at you, big bro. I oh man, I appreciate you being you coming up, man. All the support, man. Queen, peace to everybody in the chat. I love you guys. Just keep doing what you're doing. Awesome. You're definitely one of the best on the YouTube platform doing it for Black people in the Black community. And also, before I go, peace mm -hmm. to Urban Nerds. On the other side of PA, I have to get up with them guys. I'm over here in Pittsburgh, so it's like right there next to Philly. Right. So I got to well, get up with Urban Nerds. Make sure. sure you uh, subscribe to his channel. Yeah. There's an Urban Nerds yep. channel. Look for I brother. Uh, okay. Look for uh, you can. I think it's George Makem too. He's got a second George channel, Maycomb. and connect yeah. with him yeah. in your community yeah. since you're you live closer to him. Yeah. Um, if you need me brother. to get his to get his direct number to you, I'm more than happy to do that. I do I I do okay. connect with the brother on by phone sometimes so and awesome. he sends me over links to when he goes live sometimes awesome because in the state of pennsylvania black men and women we do have to come together and support one another it's not right. like california or new york or other places where right it's a lot more black you know population is a little higher pennsylvania mm -hmm. we're not really that high here so we have to kind of come together whether it's from philly mm -hmm. pittsburgh harrisburg you know all over the place we have to come right. together well, and I appreciate and Keith, and Keith, Keith. I'm in Pennsylvania. And Keith, uh -oh, I'm in okay. Pennsylvania. See? I'm in uh -huh. Philly. I'm in Philly, bro. She's in Philly. Yeah. There you go. She's in Philly. Right. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Small world. Listen, let me tell you something. We're not the reason why we're not is because they they don't count, they don't count all of us. They yeah. it's, it's total dismissal. We everywhere. Man, listen, I'm in some of those small, small itty bitty counties and you always, let me tell you something, go to a McDonald's or go to one of them little juke joint restaurants and guess mm -hmm. where you'll find our black people in there cooking. I don't mean to be, yeah. you know, you know, stereotypical, mm -hmm. but You're we will be truth. cooking because yeah, they, yeah. they always find themselves an older black man who was a Navy uh, cook to cook for all them folk that's over, th them white folks that's in them little small behind counties, okay? Because they yep. know that the brothers know how to cook. That's what I keep trying to tell brothers. Stop saying, your sisters don't know how to cook. No, brothers are the ones that always cook, and that's historical. And we love it when we see y'all with y'all big old muscles, you know, you know, putting that deer <laughs> over y'all. Yeah, okay, so anyway, all I'm saying is, Keith, I'm in Philly, and, mm -hmm. and we, no. we're going to definitely support Urban Nerds in P Pittsburgh. I do a lot of stuff in Pittsburgh. We will we'll connect, so just be on the lookout. Just be on the lookout. Definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. I really, uh, Keith, I appreciate you coming up, brother, and uh, joining and check out the Urban Nerds. Uh, check out, uh, shout out to George Makem. Let me say shout out to Black Voltron because Black P P Voltron was promoting uh, George Makem in the chat room. I have no problem with that because that's my brother in arms. So make sure y'all check him out. Give him support. And keep in mind, unlike some people who tell you you can get a tax write off, his organization is legitimate. Okay. He ain't going to be, he, he, he not trying to milk nobody. He's showing you what he's doing. With the money that you give him, you see the kids and the kids that you saw on that video that I show, that's just a small number of kids. He's got a whole other army of kids that he works with. Right. So and you can actually get a legitimate tax write off on your donation if that's something that you truly desire. These are the type of brothers that we should be supporting, not the yes. phonies that keep telling yes. you on YouTube, hit the cash yes. app, hit the cash app uh -huh. and you don't see anything happening. Exactly. Right. Except fighting support and more real fighting. Unity. So, real unity. Just like I support real independent black media, like yourself and so many other different platforms. But info man, you know me and you. We're we're part of the Wolfpack, brother. So we're already. Yeah, part of yeah. I see you over in Tim oh. Black. I wonder if he gonna go live yeah. tonight. I'll, I'll be. I'll see you over there at Tim Black's. Oh yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. But I would love to get you guys together just to have a conversation to hear yeah. you guys conversate. But that's something totally different. My goal is to get Tim Black on this platform and do exclusive, get an interview with him over here. So yeah. hopefully we can make I, I'll, I'll make contact with him. Matter of fact, I just you know who contacted me because I was trying to get him on live last week when I didn't go live, unfortunately, last mm -hmm. Sunday. Pastel at a Pastel show. He contacted me uh, and. So he's going to be coming over here. Yeah, he he's he's got a big he's got a big show on YouTube, and he's got a show, I believe, in Florida. So he's been in the entertainment game for a minute. 
Because I would and, love for this, the same way these buffoons on YouTube get together and they like mm-hmm. to talk about Hassan Campbell and <laughs> Bobby Brown and Mama's cooking and Daddy's brownies, whatever. Uh, you know, I want yeah. real in- intelligent brothers and sisters as well to come together and just feed information. You know what I mean? To well, the youth, well, younger people. Yeah. That's why when I heard about the urban nerds, I got inspired. I said, you know what? That's beautiful. Right. We need so, but I'm going to jump off this panel and I'm going to get back in the chat. Because like I said, I don't want to get in the way. I want to listen. No, nah, you're not in no <laughs> way, brother. I'm glad that I had an opportunity to hear your actual voice. It's always good to have to hear. A vo- That's why I really, and I know I'd be saying this, but I would really like to, to get people on uh, Clubhouse or Spaces or have a, you know, have all the mods, you know, be able to come up like you came up today and actually hear their voice. Because it's better to put a voice to a logo that you see in a chat room to understand that you got real humans that you're engaging with. And so to hear your voice, that lets me know that you're a real person. Absolutely. Right. And I don't call right. in any other shows. You, Tim Black, you know, shows that are really important to me that I, I love supporting and I love hearing from. I do try mm-hmm. to say, you know what? They've been talking to me for so much. It's only right for me to talk back to them and give them their flowers right now. While right. they're active, you know what I mean? Right. Instead of just, oh, I could have, would have, should have. No, I want to support you brothers and sisters out there who are doing the damn thing. Thank I you. Thank you. I, and and by the way, Keith, check out this brother right here, Trap Vision 3D. Okay. okay. He's followed, he's been checking me out. Uh, this is a good brother here. He's got a good channel. Check him out. You know, you oh. know, sometimes you can become disenchanted by YouTube when you see all the nonsense that goes on, but then you forget there's some cats like this, Trap Vision. There's black people on YouTube who have family channels and I, I, I walk in those spaces and I'm like, man, there's a lot more good going on on YouTube with black people than what we think. Mm-hmm. If you would just get out of your tent a little bit and venture out, you know, yeah, I don't have so, a lot and, of and, and that also and also and let me just say this. There's a victorious there's victoriously shade us in, in the in the. Uh, oh, yeah. In, victorious. In the chat. And she's great. She's, the, she's doing a whole lot as far as far as in, informing people, educating people about the whole Medicare system. But, you know, just how medical benefits work, how it works with your doctors, how mm-hmm. it works as as in relation to, you know, the federal um, federal funding, your state funding and your local funding and connecting all of those dots. So let me just say this. And this is what I this is where I've come. This is where I come from. Okay. I look from look at life from a glass half full. I'm not no crybaby over a bunch of numbskulls and bringing them to hear me talk about some of this educational or informational kind of stuff. Leave and leave them Negroes to that dead death trap that they want to stay in. You understand Absolutely. me? And the bottom line is that our frequency, because if you know anything about frequency and vibrational levels, we're supposed to be the we are supposed to be able to scurry up and stir up the pot so much so that we will be able to gravitate each other to us eventually. I was helping and collaborating with other content creators and, and other sectors and you know. I did the whole college, the whole college thing, bringing mm-hmm. college representatives, college administrators, college big people, HBCU folk, okay, mm-hmm. to the YouTube channels. They enjoyed it. They loved it. Now, let me tell you what happened in the midst of all of that, even though people were crying about, they don't come in some us, <laughs> like some big old babies, and we're grown freaking <laughs> folk. Right. Okay. Here's what, here's what happened. I have connected with Shawnee O'Neill. I connected with Nicole Murphy. Their people saw what we were doing, and because of that 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 little bit of connection and mm-hmm. doing what we were just doing because we love to do it and we had a heart to do it and because I know what the heck I'm talking about when it comes to going to colleges, HBCUs, trade schools, whatever the heck school folk want to go into and non-traditionals. Here's the thing. I have a connection to those people in that world. Yes. Because, and there's some of them are my clients. Some of them, et cetera, et cetera, so forth and so on. Do I make myself clear? It is not about these 
punk behind Negroes that are here in, in your face. It's about yeah, the, the world. Mm-hmm. The truth. Yeah. All right. That's so right. you are you have been put here by the most high to affect the world, not these people in this sector. And those right. of us that are in societies, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, whatever <laughs> it is, we know better. Mm-hmm. Therefore, mm-hmm. we will do better. We will not have conversations about near do wells. We will not have conversations about those people who are not doing anything because we don't live and don't look at the world glass half empty. We look at it half full. Right. And we will fill up the rest. And 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 that's how I live and, and that's how I live my life. That's why I come to you, information man, because you, you have information you. and we're talking about yep. black men and black colleges, and there are a plethora of them. Not only are they getting doc d- degrees, but they're also going to trade schools because I know uh, many of them of my colleagues who are professional black men, corporate black men, military and corporate yeah, black true. men. Mm -hmm. Military, corporate, have their own landscaping and construction businesses on the side and also property managers, so forth and so on, have have in in trusts and they have foundations and they have charities and they're very philanthropic and they own and operate a plethora of, of businesses that can help those young men at Morehouse to help them with their debt so that they don't have that uh, that was a man a black man a black morehouse man who did that for his morehouse alum so we do have a we have many men and women who do things oprah has been doing it you just don't know about it because she don't want to she don't want to say anything about it right and 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 and, uh, and interestingly enough, as soon as somebody knows somebody's giving money, that, that he goes a little, he goes the media. Well, you know, here they got. So what they do is they do it on the low, low, and I don't blame them because you know what happens as soon as we do something, here comes the little target on our backs, and then it becomes a whole whatever, whatever. And some people just want to give and 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 they will keep on walking and do their thing, and that's the way it should be. Right. Yeah. Right. There are many yeah. people. There are many people that come back into the neighborhoods and do the doggone thing. There are many brothers and sisters that do what they can do. There are many grandmothers that have been taking in their grandchildren and things of that nature while unfortunate situations have occurred. However, I will say this lastly, we have got to stop supporting bad bad behavior. So yeah. sisters having sex having conjugal visits in college, I mean, in, in, in prison, mm, not a good look, not at all. Another thing, support your your young black males when they go to college. So you know how many black men I've seen go to college by themselves with, a, with, with their own duffel bag, with their mm-hmm. own um, suitcase and no, their mom, nobody, nobody there? It happens. You're right about but, that. But, That's the but reality. Folks, but folks rally around. Five million freaking vans go to the prison to go visit Mookie. Mm-hmm. You got. You've got some damn nerve. You all have got some damn right. nerve. Right. I hear Support you. that young man. That's going to college. Yes. My father put together a trust, and we do it every year two for morehouse one for a and t my sister's school was spelman and my brother's school was south carolina state and we send s- students to college mm-hmm. you understand mm-hmm. me yes. and that's what and we can and we can all do it in one way form and it doesn't have to be full tuition or whatever it well, can be hey you need me to pay your sats uh, you need right. me to, something mm-hmm. My advice to people would be to assist or support an organization. If you're not able to do the work yourself, then maybe you can support an organization, men, women, whoever, yes. who is doing the work that maybe you don't have the time or the ability to do for whatever the reasons are. Uh, and that's the, and that's the, and, 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 and because there are already people out there 
doing exactly those taking on those challenges that you're talking about. And you can assist them if you got the time and the, you want to put some effort in. It can happen. So that's why I say yes. it, if we have existing organizations that have a track record, <clears throat> an organization track record, and you know they're legitimate, go ahead and support mm -hmm. them. Volunteer your time if you have the time. If, or, or if you know someone that wants to in, engage in that, encourage them to go check out that particular group or organization. It's, it's all up to you. We have to look at ourselves in the mirror when we wake up and it depends on it's us. It's us. It's really us. That's the difference. You know, we can complain about what white society is doing to us and this and that. At the end of the day, what are we prepared to do? What do we want to do? And what have we done at the end of the day? Because right. at the end of the day, you still have the free will to do something if you choose. You know, you have a brain, you That's have a right. mind, you have a body. Get your, get your butt moving and do something. If you feel inclined to do so. And that's one way that you can pitch into the situation. Um, one of the things. I, before I, just, I, I want to say. I see. I see Diamond to Pearl, Diamond to Pearl, what's up? And I see Empress, Diamond to Pearl is is awesome and, and a giver, philanthropic person. And she does a lot for folks in the community and everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you for coming Diamond over, Pearl. Diamonds and Pearl. Yes. 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 And I appreciate Empress, it. I see my Empress with the oh yes. I see you, my sister. We got soup and, and wash, so Diamond and Pearls, Chris CC's, Joy, uh, Sister Glorion yes. Murray's come over, Earl Owens. A lot of lot of fantastic people in the chat. Keith has yes. left a message yes. for us. My daughter video called me and I wanted okay, talk. But thank you for having me on the panel, big brother. What's going on? Good to have you on the panel as well. Let me say this to you before you go, because I'm gonna wrap yes. all this up. I put a chart up earlier showing that, and this this has always been the case that there are more black women who are earning degrees, advanced more advanced degrees than black men. But it's the same thing when it comes to the white females. I showed that chart. White females still go. outnumber white men. What is it about females that they're able to attriculate through an educational system? Are they? I know that there's a target on black males back, right? Black men in general will be targeted, right? They want to destroy the black. The black male is targeted because the black male would be the supposed to be the leader of the family, you know, the provider and what have you. But with, with that said, what is it about the, the females across the board, particularly black females, that they find themselves able to trickulate the educational system, although there are obstacles on all levels with women, especially with black women, your race, your sex, whatever. you got all these other barriers coming at you. How is it that you all are able to attriculate yourself through educational system? Listen, you know, here's the thing. Um, wow. I know I asked That's a big question there. That yeah. might be a question for another show. I don't know. <laughs> No, no, and and it might listen. This could be this could be five other shows, but but here's the thing, um, women, we 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 look at responsibility a little different than men, and even though men are supposed to be the providers and all that little Christian jargon that, that, that goes along with it. Um, women, we know that we have to have our own, so therefore we go ahead and we get through four years, get our own, and, 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 and then do whatever it is we, we're doing after that. I'm going to tell you this. One of the things that some of my students would say about college was they were like, wow, college wasn't that bad after all. Four years wasn't really a long time. And so a lot of students, when they hear, oh, my God, I just went through 12 years of, of you know, to high school. Now I got four years of college. And when they went through those four years, they're like, oh, my goodness, Miss TC, I can't believe it wasn't that bad after all. Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and so oftentimes I think it's just once we, we hear another four years, mm -hmm. we want to get out there and make money fast, 
fast life, fast yeah. life, and understand that fast life equals a fast death. And I always yeah. tell my students, fast life equals a fast death. So try to get what you need to get, get that out of the way. And, and then if you want to pursue your extra degrees, your extended degrees, if you want to go on the military, if you want to go on and create your own businesses at a certain point in time, do that. I am yeah. definitely... I've known several people going to college and then they've gone on to vocational schools and Mm -hmm. they've, you know, gotten their carpentry degree, but they also had their business degree. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. You see? Wow. So time, it's about time and our perception of time and that control of being able to do what we want to do we have a little i think we have a little bit more discipline and Mm -hmm. we will put in the time because we know at the end of it when we get over that hump that we'll be able to you know call our own shots okay we have two guests with us we have erica Mm -hmm. we have edit again media erica i think you came up on the panel first let's go over to you and hear what you have to say sister thank you for coming up Hello, gratitude, and um, hi to the chat. Be one salute. All right. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add a little bit of my two cents. I'm very shy. I don't, I don't like the spotlight, but <laughs> I did not want to let, you know, let it be known. I'm big on this. I was the one sharing on the other platform. No BS. Black people. Mm-hmm. We need black people. To believe in, you know, believe not to believe the bad stats and to know that we are we are applying pressure. We are actually, you know, we we kind of did drop the ball. I'm an 80s baby. I had a very traumatic upbringing. I used to share that, you know, I'm an 80s crack baby. Born in the late 80s. I barely got by raised as an orphan and I went to Job Corps. And mm-hmm. when I was in Job Corps, I was raised mm-hmm. by a lot of strong, educated black people. And those educated black people tried to persuade me to go to go to the college, you know, transfer, you know, take your credits. I scored high enough. I took the GED, but I scored high enough to qualify for um, Tallahassee gives you your diploma if you score above whatever, whatever on the GED, which I did. So they wanted me to go to college. I'm in the nursing profession. I wasn't interested. Everything that I did in mm-hmm. Job Corps, it came by nature. It was in my DNA. Hmm. My, I remember, my ancestors like I remember my Job great- Corps coming up myself in the eighties. So that's a yeah. that's a ring my, ring my bell statement that you said because I'm like, of, man, job lots Corps. Lots of educated black people were were working in the establishment. The the center director was a black woman. I think her name was Miss Joyce something something. They closed the one here in Gainesville now. There's still one down in Miami and um, mm-hmm. South Florida. There's some all around, but the ones that I've been to in Florida are predominantly black run institutions. Now the, go- the government funds Job Corps, but the people that are passionate about what they're doing are black people. Mm-hmm. There might be mm-hmm. a couple of you know, unmelanated teachers, they're the ones like um the lady off of Dangerous Minds and Nicole Kitman's character. They don't wow. take no crap. They're there to inspire you to be the best person you can be. But wow. anyways, I didn't want to listen to them, just like how Queen HBC was saying, I wanted to get back to the party. I was raised in Key West, Florida. Okay. So all I knew was party, party, party. And I was only 17 years old when I graduated. So I was like, you know, I'm a rock star and I'm about that life. I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to go to higher, higher education. And that was embedded in me because when I was younger, like at the age of eight years old, I can remember being treated like a dud, like she's never going to get it. You know, she's remedial, you know, she's um, dyslexic, all these labels, labels, labels being thrown at me. Yes. And it was only because of like, I had so many aunties and people, you know, like foster people, black people, and they were invested in me so much so that anytime, you know, these white people would come with these labels, they would rebuke it. And they're highly Christian. 
that's another fact that I wanted to hit on. Mm -hmm. I was um, searching in the thing while we were talking. Do you know how many biblical characters have have done a stint in prison or incarceration? There's at least 12 to 16 characters, including Jesus mm. Christ himself, that mm -hmm. were incarcerated. Right. So are we really having this conversation. So that part to be said, you know, car incarceration, <laughs> you know, that is nothing new. It's mm -hmm. what you do once you've had that that setback. That's you know, right. and also a lot of the penitentiaries offer college courses. Mm -hmm. So you could be a dual, you could be a dual enrollment. You can be on both sides of this, of this fence. You could be in prison learning to become a lawyer. I have family members do that. But anyways, it's what you make it. And we have to start planting the seeds of success in the children young. I'm talking seven and eight. And I also mentioned in the chat, we can't skip little nasty X. We can't skip him. You know that we, the mothers, the fathers of this new generation, we are applying pressure because if we weren't, they wouldn't need to pull out the big guns, which is pop culture. They wouldn't need to bring out, first he was going to take his, his horse to Old Town Road, then he was dancing in a prison, in a prison um, community shower. Why wasn't that an NFL locker room? See, everybody shows up on signing day for our young black males, athletes, when they're signing to go to, to go to, you know, a scholarship program for football, baseball, basketball, you see them standing next there taking the picture. What about mm. this, these court, these court, court dates? I go there, I see the juveniles that are transitioning to prison. They're eight, 16, not even 18, 16 and being charged as adults. They don't make right. the news. Right, you and don't nobody see a is mama, there. A daddy, nothing. And, and, nobody. And nobody is there to them. try to like get them out of that. But if a but if that kid is about Matter to fact, sign a uh, in a NFL contract, everybody and their mama's there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I so get I get what you're saying. That's the thing we need to address. But mm -hmm. what I wanted to just say was, if we were not trying as a people, as a collective, foundational Black Americans, they would not have to pull out pop culture. Little Nas right. X was taking his horse to Old Town Road. Then you turn around and he's dancing in, in the community shower. That's because they're trying to promote being a revenue generator. They want you to just be a social security number. You know mm. how they try to make it seem like you can do prison time standing on your head. You know, like, oh, yeah, it's a, it's just a um, sleepaway camp. Right, right. We have right, to that's, stop that That's early. the distractions that they're trying to. It, these are all distractions to get us away from the areas that we need to be focusing on. And that's what, yeah, in, they wouldn't you know, do it if we entertainment has always been used to distract people when there's an agenda that is putting put in place. And yes, but that's for me personally, if we weren't winning, right. they're personally, losing ground. Yeah. Personally for me, I don't really follow celebrities like that anymore. I really don't watch the Grammys and the American Music Award. And none of that stuff sways me. I don't even watch it. Right. Now, I'll hear about it. I'll see but clips children, about it. Though. But I don't like ingratiate myself into it. And our children, yeah, because a lot of the kids growing up today are very oriented to their cell phones and their tablets. And they're getting all this information that's just coming at them a mile a minute, thousands of miles a minute. Not, not even that. If you let your kids go to public school... That's like the indoctrination nowadays. Like I just, well, I, my kid comes home saying some of the weirdest stuff. I'm like, no, you leave that over there. And it's the teachers right. that say, oh, that's approved. No, it at, ain't not by me. Right. At the end of the day, even when I grew up, they said things in the eighties that kids in the eighties were getting too much information too fast. Right. Even for us, right. it's still the responsibility of your parents at the end of the day to do their job as a parent. Now, do all kids have functioning family situations? No, but but still, for those of us that are parents, it is still our job to be parents. You can't be your kids' friends. See, we one of our problems, not to get too far off topic here, is that too many people want to be their kids' friend instead of being their kids' parents. That's another problem. Anytime you got parents booty shaking out there in the streets with their kids, what message does that send? Um, because they're 
they're messed up. Right. Let me let me do this. Just I appreciate you supporting the channel and coming up right. and speaking. I want to go over as I conclude, get ready to a conclusion. And I appreciate all your thoughts. Everything that you said has been spot on. Let me go over to at media at it again media and hear what the sister um, has to say before we get ready to close out today. Uh, what's going on, my sister? And I appreciate you again for coming over and speaking, speaking so powerfully. No problem. How is everyone doing fine uh, today? I'm feeling good. You know, it's been a good weekend so far. So far. I'm great. Thank you. You. Yeah. Well, what are your thoughts? One thing that I want to speak on is because I have done volunteer in my area for mm -hmm. 14 years, mentoring and counseling at risk teams. And the program we do is for six weeks, whenever a teen get in trouble, far as shoplifting, things of that nature, disrespecting their parents, they have to yes. go six weeks in the program. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the person that started this initiative has passed. But I always remember this because everything that we're going through, yes, just as the young lady that just got off, we have to get them while they're young. Mm -hmm. If we want to make some changes, we have to get them while they're young. And our late deputy mayor spoke of this, and he said, for these are all of our children, and we shall prosper from or pay for who they become. Right. And that is true. And the program is geared towards keeping the cuffs of our kids. And we teach them seven things you need to do when approached by the law. Know mm -hmm. the law before the law know you. Dress for right. Sex. And how your crime affects so many others. Those are things that need to be instilled in our area, in our neighborhood now. Yeah. Cause yeah. They don't start at 14 anymore. They starting at seven, six, seven, stuff like that. We need right. to feel that in our neighborhood to keep them out of the prison system. Mm -hmm. Because I've learned and watched so far that once they get your name in their system, you're marked by everyone in that specific area. As far mm. as uh, the police is concerned, it could mm. be the crime and division, it could be the narcotics. You're marked. All right. Let me, if I could, um, let me say peace and respect to Glorion Murray. She sent me a super chat earlier. Thank you for the super chat. I want to thank you for sending me. You gave me a super sticker, which is really cool when it goes up the screen like that. Thank you, uh, Sister Murray. She's one of the mods in the chat room, doing a great job. If I could, I want to read with Joy. Joy always has really good points. I'm surprised she didn't come on the panel, but she already always has good points. She said the grant. She says the Grammys and other award shows promote destroying the mind of our youth with seduction and crime throughout music. Now, I want to say this because you, we're talking about you know our youth. Like I said, they're they're hit with so much information, more than we did growing up, right? They're hit with the, they got the computers, they got the cell phones, they got the tablets. They're getting information coming at them thousands of miles a minute, inundated all the time. And so we know as parents, we're we're to, we're supposed to be there to discipline them, show them the right way. But then when they go out into the world, the world and their peers have such a strong vice over them. Such a strong hole over them. Do let me ask the question: Do you see us being able to really uh, change the course of where things are going with our with our youth? Because once again, even though I sat up here and I spoke about there being more black men in college than in, in prison, our overall numbers in terms of going into college still remains low. And like the professor said, especially in the professional advanced degrees and the hard sciences and all those sort of things like that. Whereas black women, you all seem to be excelling and in going into STEM and going into college. Going back to my original question before. How can we tie, turn that around? Especially, I'm going to be honest, especially because we do have 
quite a bit of our ladies who are raising their sons by themselves. Although there are still men out there, black men who are in the lives of their kids. There are still those black women who are raising sons by themselves. Those that are out there. How can we turn it around? Well, your major is in psychology. Yes. Yeah. I majored in psychology and I work in a, in a, in a, in a environment where I'm dealing with guys who have mental health problems every day. And the one thing that they always tell me is that they had a really poor family structure. Definitely. No discipline. The, the gang became their family. Yes. So once we release our children at their kindergarten, yes, to the social economic status, that's where we have to begin to watch carefully and mm -hmm. monitor and be there for our children because mm -hmm. they could come across anything and everything, right. especially in today's society where everything is going technology. Yeah. And right. I, I always pride myself in watching whatever they watch. Like, what show are you watching? What yeah. Are you watching? <laughs> hey, what game you playing? Oh, let right. me do that. You know, I have to understand what they are thinking and what they are going through in order to fully understand how I need to deal with them. Mm -hmm. The job that I have now, although I'm a recruiter, but because of shortage of bus drivers, I am a bus driver as well. And just listening to these children, these children, they mm -hmm. talk so ill about their household. And, you know, it's not for me to say, but it's like they feel like their parents have no time for them. Mm. Their parents don't understand them or they don't get them. And I'm thinking, hmm. Yeah. I understand, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's rough. But I can say this, I have a daughter, so it is my responsibility as a man to instill what is necessary to prepare my daughter for this wow, wow world that she's living in. But my daughter's pretty smart. She's picking up on stuff. She's 14 years old, so she's picking up stuff already. She's starting to understand really how things are operating. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we got to do. We have to be honest with our kids. We've got to tell them the real deal, not be ashamed to prepare them for realizing that you prepare for the you prepare for the you prepare yourself. You hope for the best, but you prepare yourself for the worst. You prepare your kids for reality. Right. right. That's why I think growing up back in the 80s and where you didn't have participation trophies when I was playing sports, if you just if you just wasn't doing your job on that court, if you just wasn't participating properly the, 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 the coaches weren't cuddling you and i know today no. we live in a society where oh you got to be cuddled to kids i think my generation growing up the way we did it prepared us for life it prepared us to realize you ain't gonna get everything you want that's right you right you didn't you didn't you didn't excel so you don't get what you don't get anything when you didn't put a hundred percent effort in that's how it was when I was growing up playing sports and, you know, participating. <laughs> and, and, and it's so funny. Let me say this. Because I asked the kid, I said, what, when is your birthday? He said, December 4th. I said, mm -hmm. oh, that explains everything. <laughs> that fantastic, right? And he said, what the hell you mean by that? Uh-oh. I'm like, you're 12 years old. Mm. Why do you talk like that with a grown-up? He said, my parents talk like that around the house every oh. day, all day. I said, oh, I there it is. Known, there it is. The kid, you know, what do they always say? But uh, see, TC but see, once again, our, mm -hmm. but see, here's the thing. We have mm -hmm. our parents. Uh, some of our parents may have talked about talked like that also, but I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't have the gall. The I wouldn't have the audacity to speak like that to uh to another mm. adult. Yes. That was what adults did, and that's what adults. That's how they talked. Right. And I might I might talk like that to my peers, but never would I talk yeah. like that to a teacher, or someone, or or a neighbor, or an, another elder. And, right. and 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 here's the thing, information man. You said it spot on. We grew up this generation X, and this is why I always go back to this generation X. 
we grew up in a time where we, 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 whatever effort that we put in, we got first prize, second prize, third prize. That was it. That was now, it. it wasn't oh, everybody's got to get a trophy because they came to the thing. No, you, just because you step foot there, that doesn't mean that you're going to get anything. Now, and, right. and now these kids are feel entitled. They feel like they're supposed to and you're supposed to do for them. Mm-hmm. And, and then there's no manners. There's no us. Uh, th- there's a whole lot that is missing. And see, the reason why. I brought that up and I'm glad you, you, you're saying what you're saying is because y- you know this TC HBC queen in order to attriculate through college or school or a trades program, whatever you're doing, folks, it don't have to be just college in order to attriculate through that system. You have to have discipline. If you're raised as a chick kid with no discipline as a, Oh, gimme, gimme, gimme. When you go to school, the difference between high school to college, for example, is that in, in high school, everybody's kind of holding your hand in college. It's up to you to go to that class. It's up to you to do your research. It's up to you. Ain't nobody holding your hand. So we have to prepare our kids when we talk about how do we get enough of our people into these tr- these these programs where they get education, whatever it may be. It starts at home. Don't make them so interdependent that. You don't discipline them to understand that there's nothing free in life because when they go to school, they're going to expect they're not going to be able to handle their failures. Because you you prepared them to just say, "Okay, here you go. Anyway, even though you you didn't do what you're supposed to do. Here you go. No. So I think when you talk about trickling through educational systems, I think you can link it also back to what's going on in the household how that kid is challenged, he or she is challenged to take on life. And, you know, I got to be honest, uh, TC, and all of you, it was, when I was growing up, it was rough, man. When I look back on it, I'd be like, man, I wish they wouldn't have did this and that. But when I think about it as a 52-year-old man, it prepared me to deal with my disappointments in life, to be able to boost myself back. Because I had the old men in the barber shop where I used to get my hair cut as a kid. My father, my family, they would tell you there's no nothing free in life, boy. And not, you get out and, there, and, you and, work. Yes. And you work and you work hard because the only time that the word success comes before work is in the dictionary. So you right. have to work. You understand right. what I'm saying? And, and when you grow and, up and, and you these see folks want to be rappers, they want to be right. rappers. They want to no, no. But no, see, this, this is the thing that's powerful. Cause in my family, I have tons of uncles. All of my uncles worked hard all their life and they end up owning all exactly their own right. businesses. They end up owning their own businesses. I got a chance to see in my family work ethic my one of my uncles he would tell one of my cousins when i leave the house in the morning he said you're doing one or two things if you're living in this household you're going to school or you're working or you're doing both but when i leave out the door to go to work you ain't laying up in here you leaving out with me there you go and that's exactly the way that's how our households were run And, and you 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 were not staying by you would have to do something you would have to participate you have to make sure you contribute and you would also have to make sure that you are invested and unfortunately these young people some of them don't feel invested they don't feel a part of because we have right. we have to create the engagement and mm-hmm. it's really it's really very it's just very interesting but i do want to say this lastly that yes. i think Thank goodness and kudos for STEAM. See, there's mm-hmm. STEM, but they don't. There's there's another program called STEAM, which is the A, S T E A M, and that's the arts. Cause see, here's the th- here's the deal: your left brain, your right brain, and your medulla. There's hmm. three parts of your brain. Okay, and mm-hmm. in those three parts, hey, there's hey, there's the arts. Hey, the arts are the ones. The mm-hmm. art. I mean, in music, uh, yeah. philosophy, humanities. Right. Um, uh, one side of your brain that, is the creative side. One side is the analytical side. Definitely. I hear you, TC. Exactly. Right. Go, let me, let me give uh, It's Edit Again Media her last each. thoughts. Go <laughs> no, ahead. I'm going to give her her last thoughts. 
What are you saying, we sister? Must, and we must use all of these. It, we must use each side of our brain, mm-hmm. each so that we can be. It's it's holistic. Right. So steam, and and does exactly that. And mm-hmm. so that's why I'm I, again. It's not one versus the other. We okay. have to incorporate young women. If you want to be a, a lawyer, I know a lot of lawyers who also do hair. They also do their cooks. I know some brothers who again are judges. And mm-hmm. I have a friend of mine who's a JAG attorney and he is he he's on Broadway and he's in place. OK. All right. You see All right. TC. We got to have multiple streams of income. That's the bottom <laughs> line. OK, let me right. just break it on down. All yeah. right. Multiple streams of income. So when one thing goes and this doesn't happen and this is going awry because of a pandemic pandemic right. and this over here is happening because the economy di- dipped a little bit, we'll be able to have some other things to fall back on and know what to do and know how to do instead of whining and crying because the white man, no, equipped ourselves so that mm-hmm. we can be the best that we can be. Okay. Yeah. This is what I want to do. I want to give you a clap. Thank you. Thank you for coming on to the panel and saying those powerful words. Let me go ahead. I really appreciate everything that you said, TC. Very much on point. I really appreciate it. Uh, and y'all have me, a great one. Take oh, care. you have a great one too, sister. And always you're welcome here. Always. What I want to do, and I appreciate TC and those powerful words, is I want uh, Edit Again Media to leave us with some powerful words as well as I close it out. Okay, thank you so much. What I was going on is that with this theme, Mm -hmm. they're going to end up adding another letter. But it just basically added on something they already took out of our education system. When we were growing up, we already had that. That is like a secondary thing that they supplement education with. Yes. Something that we should always have. But the other thing far as being having a master's in education, I learned that every kid is not as studious. That's Everyone true. is not equipped for school. So what I tell my kids, what I tell other kids is mm-hmm. find what you are good at. Yes. And master that. Become your own business person, your own uh, entrepreneur, whatever it is. Don't get into something that you will hate doing. Right. Mm-hmm. You will hate doing. I agree with you. Yes. Yes. That's the way to go. Uh, you're welcome here anytime. I want to give you a clap too as well. Thank you so much. And, um, and everybody that's come over to the chat room, I know that people are in the chat room talking. We got uh, Miss S. Thomas and Erica came up and gave us some powerful statement. The queen is in the house. Joy gave some powerful statements in the chat room. Uh, everybody in the chat room has been fantastic. And and I, I'm glad that the people that showed up in the chat room that are listening, those those people matter. They they took the chance to t- take the time out of their life to hear the conversations that we had today. I think these conversations were very important. I think to break through these myths are very important. But we still have a lot of work to do. We still have some problems. Yes, we do. We still have issues. Um, you see rappers and folks like this being dr- being taken out of here. They're dropping like flies. Mm-hmm. And um, the violence definitely is uh, continues to keep wrapping up. Yeah. So I hope that somehow that this can be come to an end. I don't know. I've been saying this for years. Like, when is it going to come to an end? I'm 52 years old and this stuff still continues to keep progressing and happening. Um, and of course... Black men in particular and black women are rising up and being incarcerated still uh, are being incarcerated. But let's not forget that not the majority of black men are all in the criminal system or I call it the injustice system. There are many of us that are professionals, have trade skills. We're in the life of our kids as well. Not all of us are musty and crusty and dusty. But there are some of us that need to improve ourselves and better or better ourselves and uh, and wake up at some point in time. So I want to thank you at media again, media. Let everybody know about you have a YouTube channel, right? 
Yes. Let everybody know where they can find you on YouTube, social media, so on and so forth. Oh, they can go to Edit Again Media. I don't have a niche. I just talk about whatever comes to mind mm -hmm. with whatever going on in my life at that time. Okay. So just like it says on her description there, Ed Media, Edit Again Media, go over and check her out. I'm going to give you a clap, sister. I thank you for coming upstairs with me today and joining the conversation. Yeah. And um, you have a great rest of your weekend. You as well. The Thank you. The next, there it is again. Edit again, media. Sister came up, spoke, was speaking her piece, speaking her mind. Thank you. Um, the next live stream that I'm going to probably drop on you all this week uh, is one about James Brown. And I have a lot of problems. I, that was the one I was going to do today. But I think it was better that I did this one today because this is the one that I had scheduled in advance in the first place. But the video that I'm going to do about James Brown will be a short live stream, but to the point. This depends if I have people on the panel. I have a lot of issues around what's happening with his music and other historical artists in the company that has control of the music. We're going to go over that. I'm going to drop that surprise pop-up video this week. And we're going to talk about th that situation. Um, I want to show you guys. I want to show you something. Basically, I want to show you the people that have control of the music, what they look like and who else you would not be surprised that this company controls. This is why it's important to have a living will something that can't be contested is important to leave all leave everything, all your ducks all lined up properly so that if you leave this third dimension, there's not a mess left behind where vultures can come in and snatch up the, the value of this legend or th that legend or, we're going to talk about the James. We're going to talk about James Brown. I'm going to do that. And uh, I've got to. I want to appreciate everybody in the chat room. Thank you for being here. Um, I want to say peace to Mike V is in the house. TC, HBC, Queen, who came up and uh, blessed us with her presence. Marlo's music channel. He knows a little bit about this James Brown situation, I'm sure. Uh, Marlo, Marlo Music Channel is in the house. Make sure you give him some support on his channel. He has a great channel. Brother plays a mean piano. Uh, we got Earl Owens, who's been a longtime uh, supporter of the channel. Let's see. We've got uh, there was somebody I just missed. We've got uh, Natro in the house. Chris C C C. Hey, Chris C C C. Uh, brother uh, Pes uh, Pastel contacted me by IG. And he wants to kind of connect. He said he missed my. He had uh, unfortunately missed my first message that I gave him. So uh, me and uh, Pastel are going to collaborate over here very soon because he wrote me back. So we're going to we're going to get a date set up. And uh, so you'll see uh, Pastel over here. Hopefully all the folks from his channel will come on over and bless this platform as well with their presence. Let me say peace to Brother Keith to hear his voice for the first time was great because it's always great to put a voice with people that are giving you support and taking of their time. I implore all of you in the chat room who have been supporting this channel to come upstairs. Let me hear your voice. I mean, you don't have to show yourself if you don't want to, but come upstairs. I would love to hear your voice. Just come upstairs and say hi if that's what you want to do. You know, it's just it makes it that much more real to know that. You're not just avatars in a chat room or avatars looking at videos, but you're real people with real background, real lives, real situations. And to be able to hear your voice, it makes it that much more real to me that we got real people out here in the chat room watching that are on YouTube, that are YouTubers themselves. And they have real voices that you can connect to. And I like that. Let me say uh, respect to the queen. Appreciate you coming over. 
and doing the things that you do. Let me read what you said over here. You said, it's so sad how we don't know about certain affairs in our lives. We have to take time to learn and teach our brothers and sisters. Not easy, but needed. You're absolutely right. And I'm going to say, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Uh, Mike V is in the house. I appreciate you, brother, from coming over. And uh, blessing the chat room with your presence. I want to say uh, blessings to uh, Edit Again Media, Sister TC, uh, HBCU Queen. I believe she has a, a YouTube channel, I believe, as well. So you want to check her out. We got Black Voltron, who's been in the house rocking heavy. Black Vot uh, Voltron, he rocks heavy with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you rock heavy over there with uh, Brother George Makem as well. Voltron, are you a mod for Jason Black? I could have swore that I was either you're a mod for you're a mod for a, 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 a big YouTuber. Is it Jason Black or is it? Uh, let just let me know, Black Voltron. I think I saw you somewhere and you're modded up. And I think on a big channel, I want to say Jason Black. Uh, but welcome over. You're always welcome over here, Voltron. You're a mod in my chat room. In this chat room, let me say this chat room. It's not my chat room. It is the chat room. It is your chat room. Uh, oh, we got Alan Christian is in the house. Alan is here. Thank you. Saying, whoa, I didn't get my notification. Yeah. The reason why you didn't get your notification, because this is what YouTube does. They create these notifications and I get tons of people who tell me they're not getting my notifications. That That's. That has been a bone of my intention on YouTube since I've been on YouTube. You have people that subscribe to your channel. You go live at a pretty decent time. And YouTube doesn't get your notifications out to everybody that subscribes to you. You know what YouTube does to you? Go to my channel a couple, a couple of times during the week or go to, go to my channel page. And you will notice that sometimes when you go to my channel page, it will have you unsubscribe. And then you got to resubscribe again. What is that all about? I have had that same experience with people that I follow on YouTube. And when I go to their channel page, I'm like, what is this? I've been subscribed to this person for like a, for years. Why am I unsubscribed? Now I know why I'm not getting no notifications. I can't figure out when they're going live because it's not coming up anymore. So I got to go to their channel manually. I suggest you do that. Go to channels manually. And you will be surprised when you find out that the algorithms or whatever the system that YouTube uses will unsubscribe you. I wish somebody from YouTube would come out and explain why that's happening. You notice they never sent us a video. They sent us a video about everything else. Oh, how to build your channel, how to be a content creator. How about YouTube? You come out with a video explain to us why you be unsubscribing us from channels when we're not even bots, we're real people. I would like to know that. Inf that that's the one that we need, that explanation. That's truth. Tell the truth. Yeah, YouTube does have a fun. Yeah, uh, hey, Keith, I noticed on Tim Black's channel, he's losing numbers. He used to, he would have easy two, 300, 400 people up in there. Now his numbers are going down. Remember when he was talking about Facebook, how when you put stuff on Facebook, Facebook does everything they can to keep your videos from pushing through. See, if you are a channel that's saying something that's relevant and resonates to waking people up, YouTube ain't got no love for you. They shadow ban you. But if you on here talking, if you on here like with the fluff, you see the channels on YouTube. They they're not doing anything. They, their content is just fluff. It's just you know, all they they get everything. They're being pushed all through the album rhythms. I've always have never liked that, and it just is what it is. But I deal with it. I deal with it best I can. Let me see. Mike V said, "Yeah, cat videos get millions of views. Yeah, cat videos get millions of views." Well, because the cat videos are non threatening. You're not the cat video is not conveying anything to you to waken your mind up. The cat video is just what a passive video that puts you to sleep. That's what they want us to do. Be put to sleep. Tell the truth. Uh, let me see. 
Funny how I was unsubscribed from Tim Black information. Yeah, when I go over to Tim Black's channel, it'll have me unsubscribed. I'm like, wait a minute. I've been subscribed to Tim Black for a minute now. I'm a member of his channel. What's that all about, right? It's crazy. Oh, uh, man. In the Reset Race podcast, it was crazy how YouTube works for truth. If, yeah, it's, 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 just, it's just crazy. But let me get on out of here. I've taken up all your time long enough, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great night. Enjoy yourself. Have a nice meal, a nice drink. Relax. Watch a movie or check out more content creators on YouTube, folks. I'll see you on the YouTube streets. Take care. Peace to you. Take care, everybody. Peace. Tell the truth. Lately, it's looking like everything perfect. Out the mud with it, I put the work in. You can find me where that turf is. Pin precision like a surgeon. Bad ones used to curb me. Showing up to the show when the curse split. She know that I'm worth it. I'm finna go up, I'm aerial. I got the hip stash, got a bracelet for impact. Real tricky, quick to flip a pretty penny to a thick stack, quick stack. Thick oh, let me. I talk real. I give a fuck about how Wait a minute. Me and Zay just dropping a pro. Let me stop. There was another part of my presentation that I forgot to show y'all. Let me just show this real quick. This is where they, this is what, this is what I wanted to contrast in my presentation, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. It was one more thing I wanted to contrast here. So I've shown you tonight that black men are in college at 1.4 million in comparison to 840,000 in prison because they don't want to see us like this. See? See? graduating with caps on our head, graduating in all sorts of incredible majors and endeavors and certifications and licenses and medical school type stuff. This is not what they want to see of us achieving. They would rather see us in this situation right here in prison, behind bars, getting off a prison bus like this. They would rather us be in this condition, this situation. They would rather us be packed in like sardines as part of the Department of Corrections in this sort of condition. This is what society wants to think of us as, as what you see with these black men in prison right here. And these black men that are getting off the prison bus and our hands wrapped like this. They don't want to see us in the rain on a commencement day, commencement day with our caps and our gowns getting our degrees. No, that is where we need to be and need to stay at. But that is what society, in my opinion, does not always want to see of us. They want to see us as this. And as this. Instead of being winners in life, they want us to be losers in life. Or they want to chump us up with charges that do not fit. That's what they are afraid of, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again. That's the end of my presentation. Lately, it's looking like everything perfect. Out the mud with it, I put the work in. You can find me where that turf is. Pin precision like a surgeon. Bad ones used to curb me. Showing up to the show when the curse split. She know that I'm worth it. I'm finna go up, I'm aerial. I got the hit stash, got a bracelet for impact. Real tricky, quick to flip a pretty penny to a thick stack, quick stack. Think fast and I talk real. I give a fuck about how they feel. Me and Zay just dropped a propane and it sounded like massive pill. For my dog, I'ma ride to the wheels kill. Got his hand on the hammer, so keep it legit. I've been the man with the blueprint. I'ma stop till I own every brick. I used to lay out in the line just to feel the world spin on its axis. Now I got the access and the last laugh got it off for the passion. Keep it a hundred on the dash now that we got our subtraction Slick talker, I'm a showstopper, you are not solid Tread cops couldn't go a mile in my toe box Stun a shade with the visine Light it up and bring the vibe in Line tent, color spot beam on me I'm a star, every night lit, ultraviolet Hey, 
I told her make sure that phone is on silent So we know I'm what the vibe is Take a look at my iris I think she know that I'm high risk I never know what the time is I never know what my mind went Ay, I got a lot on my plate I got an eye on the prize And I'ma make sure that we straight yeah. Look, it's a lot on my mind I got an eye on the prize And I'ma make sure that we straight I'ma make sure that Hey, I got a lot on my plate I got an eye on the prize And I'ma make sure that we straight hey. Look, it's a lot on my mind And I yeah, got an eye on the prize and I'ma make sure that we stray. I'ma make sure that I used to toss a coin in the waterfalls in the wishing well. Now I get plenty coin, bitch. I'm self made. You ain't gotta wish me well. You ain't like me then, but I guess it's past tense. Cause you tapped in. You was never who you said. I see the facade when looking, it really be that quick to tell. My guard up. I ain't taking nails. If it's not in my favor, won't sign a deal. I got the royalty in the mail. I got authority in the field. Take a look in my iris. I be precise with the timing. I move on a touch that shit high yeah, risk. True. I never know where my mind went. Hey. I got a lot on my plate. I got an eye on the prize. And I'ma make sure that we straight. Yeah. Like it's a lot on my mind. And I got an eye on the prize. And I'ma make sure that we straight. I'ma make sure that we. Hey. I got a lot on my plate. I got an eye on the prize. And I'ma make sure that we straight. Yeah. Like it's a lot on my mind. And I got an eye on the prize. And I'ma make sure that we straight. I'ma make sure that Tell the truth. We got to be winners. Tell the truth. Take care, everybody. Thank you for giving me your time. I see we got HH in the house. We got creative, creative, creatively created is in the house. Thank you for coming over. Uh, watch the repeat video. I think you'll get some value out of this video, family. Take care, everybody. Peace. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel.